Hello my friends, my name is Artur Rey and I am an Estonian YouTuber. You don't know where Estonia is? Look to the map, look to Europe, look to Northern Europe. No, that's where you're wrong. Look to Eastern Europe. Nah, not right also. Eastern and Northern. In the between of that, there is Estonia, below Finland and fr north from Latvia. We got both the good things from Northern Europe and the good things from Eastern Europe. Perfect mixture. Oh, I got carried off. Today we actually focus on a true Eastern European country, not a Northern Eastern like Estonia, but Poland. Poland is Eastern European, yeah! But it's in European un Union also. So it got the good benefits of nowadays modernization, but it got good benefits also from ex-Soviet, I don't know, culture. For example, hard bus. So yeah, we're gonna dive into Poland, let's see. And not, not dive in as the Soviet Union did in the 40s or the German Germans did in the 40s. We're gonna dive in uh, peacefully and friendly and just research it. Geography now, Poland. All right, we've reached Poland. Europe's, uh, how can I put this? Poland knows how to take a hit. It's hey. like... <laughs> 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 Is that all you got? I'm not even breaking a sweat, f***ers. Oh, I like this guy. It's time to learn geography <laughs> now. But I could na every time Barbie hit the guy, I could name one historical event that happened to Poland. And it, the po Poland is still fine. 40 million people, or so, I, I don't know how many, but I think it was 40. A lot of Slavic people who have gotten a lot of damage, that's a lot of damage throughout history, and they're still fine. You go, Poland. By the way, this is my buddy Art, he's half Polish. Uh, Art, do you know anything about Polish? Art! I'm Art. Hey, Poland is Eastern European. Nice! I know nothing about Poland, but I know my last name means on Friday. So anyway, I have another Polish friend named Conrad, who's actually also going to be in this episode. He's Polish and he speaks Polish. Hey, f*** that guy. Well, uh, Art, you can also play Poland in the skits and stuff in this episode. Is that cool? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> right, cool. Anyway, hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Welcome to the Wolverine of Europe. The Poles know how to deal with calamity, and if there was ever a mutant apocalypse, you would probably want one on your team. In any case, let's begin. If there's a mutant apocalypse, we all go to Poland. That's settled. There's no argument about it. How to piss off a Polish person one-on-one. Oh man, I just visited Poland. I sure loved that Eastern European country. It's Central! <laughs> Central European! Yeah, they don't- No art, it's Eastern European. Say what you want, man, it's Eastern European. If they call Estonia Eastern European, we're super Nordics. Uh, we're the E country. You could vote online in 2005. We're the, we're the most online-based country, but they call us Eastern European. So if we are Eastern European, you are Eastern European. We're both Eastern European. Which is fine, what's wrong with Eastern European? It's cool hard bus and kvass and I don't know, all the cool lot of stuff. I don't like being called Eastern Europe, even though, I mean, come on, they're kind of more on the Eastern side of the continent and it's... Okay, okay, Central, Central, Central Europe. Central. Country. The country is located in Central Europe and bordered by <laughs> seven other countries. Keep in mind, this little guy right here is a detached exclave of Russia called Kaliningrad. Oh, Speak that's bad. This is this, they have nuclear missiles in there. Screw that. Speaking of which, we already mentioned this in the Germany episode, but Poland shares an island called Uzedam or Uznam with Germany in this lagoon. The borders follow some natural boundaries like rivers and mountains, however most of them were agreed upon after war times. The country is divided into 16 voivodeships or provinces, the capital and largest city of the country Warsaw in the center. It also holds the busiest airport Warsaw International. From there the second largest city is Krakow, known as- Why does Barbie sound like he's done with life? Uh, the second largest city is that and I want to shoot myself. Sounds like he's so, I, I know it's a style, it just starts the style like that, but it sounds like he's so done with Poland already. As the medieval capital down south, and it holds the second largest airport, John Paul II Krakow International. And rounding out for third place is the city of Łódź, which means boat, nearly in the center of the whole country. Boom. Nonetheless, the city of Gdansk holds the third largest airport, Gdansk International, and also the busiest shipping port located on the Baltic Sea, where much of the cargo comes into the country. Otherwise, their entire sea access is confined to the coastline. They do not own any distant islands in the Baltic. Due to the general flat landscape making much of the north and central parts. Poland is a bustling transport hub with numerous roadways that traverse every single corner into every neighboring nation. Since yeah, I've driven through Poland, like the whole country, I think three times when I went to Croatia. Three times I've been to Croatia with by a, with a car. And we drove through Poland, it take like two, 10 hours, took so much hours. Poland built a, I don't know, a teleporting machine. Please do it. I know you can do it. Build a teleporting machine. So if I want to go to Croatia, I, I I don't have to drive 10 hours through Poland. 
which is fine, but I think we got stopped many times by the police and we had to pay some taxes and fines and I think Polish roads are not free, I'm not sure, I remember we paid something, so yeah, build a teleport, then we talk. Joining the EU, nearly 2 billion euros have been invested in Poland's rail lines and high-speed lines are being constructed today. Poland doesn't have any autonomous areas, but if we had to discuss historical and cultural regions, many people may just refer to this general area as Masuria, sometimes even historical Prussia. This general area is Pomerania. That's right. So Prussia, the country that doesn't exist anymore. So, so, I don't know, I feel bad about it a little bit because they were such a superpower. There was like... The the strongest country in Europe at one point, and now, boom, they don't even exist. Their people doesn't exist. It's just not a thing anymore. Same as the dog, which is where it comes from. And the coastal area is Kashubia, where the Kashubians are mostly found. There's Greater Poland, Lesser Poland, which at the very border has Ruthenia or Red Ruthenia. Parts of the south are considered Silesia, which are inhabited by peoples that have their own distinct culture apart from the Polish. It's all kind of confusing and we'll talk more about it later. One thing you have to understand is that historically, Poland had a lot of different types of administrative divisions and much of it was shaped by war. Sometimes they had more land, other times they had less, and for 123 years they kind of disappeared altogether. Here's Prussia! Russia! Austria! Well, okay, that sounds like Estonia actually. Uh, everybody took a bit. Sometimes they took a whole country, but we're still here and some of these countries aren't, so we're stronger. Yeah. Actually, they almost completely disappeared. I mean, Krakow was technically a free city state for about 30 years. And keep in mind, we mentioned this in the Lithuania episode, but if you want to be incredibly technical, historically, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth had some colonies. Way back yeehaw when they thought one island in the Gambia, as well as Trinidad and Tobago, would be good overseas investments, making them the only sites that the Polish had colonized outside of Europe. Then what happened? In the end, it was too hard for them to manage, and they sold them off. The end. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> here are some places of interest you guys, the Polish geography, suggested we mention this episode. They have quite a few UNESCO heritage sites, a lot of them are like chapels. The Holy Mountain of Gabarka, the painted village of Zalipe, Chopin's heart, this rock city, the upside down house, Kosciuszko Mound, the carrot house, the world's most narrow house. Tons of cool statues and monuments like these. The world's tallest Pope statue. Tons of World War II sites, it's kind of what they're known for. Of course, there are way too many churches like these. This one was where all the former kings were coronated. And of course, there's Warsaw's St. John's Cathedral. There's a bunch of synagogues that actually survived World War II. And there's even a wooden mosque for the Tatar minority in Krusinyani. There's so many museums and galleries. Here's a bunch of notable ones. And too many castles, but they're very proud of having the world's largest medieval castle in Melbourne. Yeah, Poland does not fall short when it comes to sights to see, or things to do, or nature to explore. And that means we move on to the next segment. Or to survive foreign invasions. That also is a third thing. The... <laughs> It is said that the name Poland comes from Polani, which means people living in open fields. Poland is not all flat and not all plains. There's much more to it than you think. Poland is generally divided into five physical regions. The coast, the lake lands, the Polish plain, the Polish uplands, and the mountain regions. Much of Poland's coast along the Baltic Sea is straight until you hit the east and you get these interesting natural formations called spits. We've already talked about them in the Lithuania episode, but basically, spits are thin, narrow sandbanks that divide the sea from another body of water, creating saltwater lagoons. Lagoons, the largest one being the Bay of Puck, the Szczecin, and the Vistula Lagoon, shared with Russia's Kaliningrad exclave. Much of the country inland lies on the flat Polish plain, part of the Greater North European plain, a huge open flat segment of Central Europe that extends across multiple countries. Many people say that this is both the blessing and curse of Poland, because although a third of the country is forested, this one being the largest national park, and about a third is arable, making them a powerhouse contributor to Europe's agriculture sector, it did kind of make it easy for outside forces to enter and invade, with little or no natural I mean, it was really easy to happen if you have roads and if you have flat grounds, but as soon as they entered Russia, they didn't have roads anymore and they didn't have flat grounds anymore, so boom, it stops down. That's why taking over Poland was so easy. Polish army was okay back then, it wasn't weak, it was okay, it's just that we were much, much stronger obstacles barricading the interior of the country. Anyway, within this plain, many rivers like the Notek, the Varta, and the longest river, the Vistula, meander through the fertile valleys, passing through many important cities like Warsaw. In the north side, you have two massive lake districts, the Pomeranian and the larger Masurian, which also holds the largest lake of the country, Larkshnyarve. The further south you go, the higher the elevation gets until you hit the Poland... Oh, let's talk about names in Poland. Like, they're... There are Slavic names in Western Latin alphabet, which makes them super weird, super strange, and impossible to say out loud. You, can even, you can't even think them, your brain will burst in flames. Like, I don't know. Maybe that's the, why the names are so difficult, that if 
another invasion comes, they don't know how to read the street signs, they don't know where to go. That's one theory. Uplands, a little further south on the border with the Czech Republic and Slovakia, you find the two main and largest mountain chains, the Sudets and the Beskids, which form the north part of the larger famous Carpathian mountain chain. Here you can also find the tallest peak, Mount Rese, right on the border of Slovakia. Alright, and that just about does it. Now I need my triple shot of espresso break, and this time, Art is gonna come in to finish off the physical geography section. What do you want me to say, Barbie? The next thing on the teleprompter. Now, as you can see, by this point, Poland has a lot more than just- Yeah, he's a muscle mountain, look, he's like Poland flat plains and lakes. They even have moving sand dunes in the north, and a small desert in Boyendouf, which literally translates to mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> Poland, deserts, you'd never think those two would go together, right? Oh, and there's also a crooked forest made up of trees oh, that bend at a 90 degree. We have those trees in Estonia, and at the beach, at the coast, uh, the wind comes in from the sea, and the trees have to grow, so as soon as they grow, the wind pushes them over, and they grow like that. It's super cool, it's just strong wind does this. No. No science. Magic. This is pure magic. Witches in the forest do it. Degree angle. Many people have theories as to how it got that way. Some say it's natural. Some say it was a dude trying to make chairs. In any case, <laughs> Poland is a major producer of apples, six in the world, as well as being the world's largest treacle. Treacle? What the heck is treacle? And amber, amber exporter. <laughs> I don't even know what amber is either. What is that? Petrified tree sap? No, no, amber is actually really valuable and it only exists in the Baltic coast. Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, not that much Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland. Really valuable. It's um, pine. Pine green. I don't say. Pines, if you make a hole in them, the stuff comes out. How you call it? We call it vike. Well, that stuff, water came on top of the forests, and that stuff was turned into amber un underneath the water. It's really valu valuable, and you can make. Back in the day, I mean back 2,000 years ago, people used to make jewelry out of that and it's, it's cool stuff. It actually is. It is. Whoa. <laughs> Today though, Poland's economy is now mainly driven by the service sector and industry with main products like machinery and cars, buses, and video games being their largest export. Anyway, Poland also has quite a few endemic animal species like storks, Eurasian lynx, roe deer, and they have one of the largest populations of the rare European bison, which- European bison is died out. No one has it except for Poland, which is really cool. Even the invasions didn't kill the bison. Good for you. Have you guys ever had a bison burger? I mean, that's like really good. All right, don't eat those. Those are endangered. And bears. In fact, a bear once. <laughs> okay, I like that. I like this guy. He should. He should be in more episodes. And this is Wojciech, the Polish bear who was in Second World War. We watched a video about it. Really cool bear. 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 He actually helped to fight the. Uh served in the Polish army, and there's a statue dedicated to him. Look it up, gold old Wojtek. Anyway, time to finish up with food. Some of the top Polish dishes, you guys, the Polish geography peeps. Geography? That's what I call them, Art. Suggested we mention in- Okay, okay, let's talk geography peeps. It's a weird name. Parmi, what's up? Why, <laughs> why geography peeps? Uh, okay, yeah, it's a decision, but <laughs> there's, let me think of a better name. Yeah, I can't think any. Good choice. Include things like bigosh, cabbage rolls, galanka pork knuckle, roasted duck served with honey and apples. So many soups <laughs> like these. But the national dish being sour rye soup. And of course, the most popular dishes many people have heard of. Pierogi, kielbasa, kavanos, and Krakow style sausage. And bagels. Yes, bagels originated from <coughs> Poland. From the Pol I mean, bagels are just salty donuts. I don't like bagels. Don't kill me. Jews. Not New York. But they did move to New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, you cannot talk about Poland without mentioning vodka. Some say it was invented in Poland. What? Hey, you guys, you are Polish or what? Vodka, vodka. It's vodka. Blat. Some say the Polish just make really good vodka, but either way, vodka usually takes. I can't hear this. Ah, uh, this word. No, this. Please say vodka. Don't say vodka. 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 What is this? Sorry, he's a super funny guy, but it says vodka wrong. Takes up a huge section in most Polish grocery stores. I've seen this guy in vodka. <laughs> no, no, you haven't. That was not Greek whiskey, and we don't talk about that here. Polish people know what they like. <laughs> They're a distinct people. Speaking of which, we now move on to. Let me guess. We move on to commercial. What the hell is this? Two. Thank you, Art. Thanks. Can I do like one of those special effect outros, like, you yeah. know, Wolverine theme? Can I have the claws sure. or something like that? Sure, yeah, go for it. Here. Okay. Ah! Is it true if I kill you, I what? become you? Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Who does the effects? It's really cool. What the hell? This took like, I don't know, 30 hours probably. It does work. Now, some of you guys have told me, in Poland, there's kind of like a word that sums up the Polish mindset. Załatwicz. It means something along the lines of accomplishing tasks and taking care of business. Half of everybody- And surviving invasions, we cannot forget about that. In Europe has probably at one point at least encountered a Pole. They're everywhere. Working. Polish doctors in Germany, Polish contract workers in London, Polish bus drivers in Iceland. Work is in their blood, and it's a huge part of who they are. The population is about 40 million. However, keep in mind, as hey, far as there are about 20 million Poles living abroad, and they are the second largest Slavic group after Russians. The country is incredibly homogenous with about 96% of the population claiming to be Polish, Whoa. which is part of the Slavic family group. This makeup is mostly due to the Nazi intervention of World War II and Soviet relocation policies of the 20th century that drastically changed the previously diverse population. The country has few minority groups, however, of the minorities, the largest groups would be the Silesian at about 1.3% and the Kashubians at just under 1%. The rest is mostly made up of other Europeans like Ukrainians, Belarusians, Czechs, and non europeans Europeans. They use the Polish Zwati as their currency, they use the type C, E, and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the Okay, road. countries, why do you use three types of plug outlets? Why not only European plug outlet? What, what the hell? You're from Europe and you use three different types. In Estonia we have only one. It's easy. You got three, I mean... Confusing. Now, of course, the main language of Poland is, of course, Polish. Lots of people say Polish is, like, really hard to learn. For one, they have yeah. seven cases of speech and too many consonants that are smashed all together at once. Geography seven cases of speech. <clears throat> we have 14. Please. Pavel says the Polish language is basically just spoken Wi-Fi passwords. Here's Conrad <laughs> with a Polish tongue twister. Sometimes even the Polish people say they have to polish up on their Polish. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> Poland is kind of a sociological anomaly. Even though they are Slavic, it's kind of like the easternmost extent of Latin influence, which explains why the majority at around 86% identify as either Catholic or, in the very least, nominally Catholic, varying degrees of devotion. Catholicism plays a huge role in Polish culture. They they even have a channel dedicated to the Pope on TV. Politically, Poland is usually a more conservative nation that holds to its roots. And even I mean, they're very conservative. Look at their government right now. Polish government is almost right now, fully. So they're super. They're most conservative. I can't say this word. They're most old school in Europe right now. No, they're part of the EU. They usually do not let anyone tell them how they should run things in their own country. Oh, yeah, it's their, oh, yeah. own, their rules. It's like, all right, so it's settled. Uh, what do you think of this proposal for the union, guys? I hate it. Now, Poland, <laughs> you're a key player. We need you to like this. I still hate it. <laughs> come on, <laughs> yeah, Poland. Yeah, that's Poland. Don't be stubborn. You oh, go. really, Germany? You want to come back to Poland again and tell us how to do things around here? Do you remember what happened last time? Oh, my. Are you really going to play this card again? I always will. <laughs> I'm exaggerated, but... <laughs> what the hell? This is perfect. I love this episode. Please, two more like this, Barbie. It's perfect. <laughs> but yeah, don't push the Polish. They've gone through tons of that. I mean, literally, like a fifth of their population died during World War II, the majority of whom were Polish Jews. Often in tight-knit Yiddish-speaking communities, Poland had one of the highest populations of Jews prior to World War II, and at one point, up to 10%. They played a huge historical role in what Poland was and would be. Poles are proud that they were the only European-occupied country to never collaborate with the Nazis. They never officially surrendered, and all those years the Nazis were there, the underground army kept fighting. Poles have an incredibly complex history. I mean, they had a weird electoral monarchy thing. Conrad, explain. So the royal elections of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth became the thing after the death of the last Egalonian on the Polish throne. And at his death, it was decided that there would not be a royal dynasty that would just continue from generation to generation. That is to say that they would elect a king from a royal dynasty in Europe. But after his death, they would once again elect another monarch instead of letting his children take over the Polish throne. So they invented democracy after the Greeks, basically. The Greeks invented it way back, and then Polish Lithuania invented it in the Middle Ages. And fun fact, they actually elected a king. Uh, they elected a woman to the position of king, but they didn't have a queen. The position of queen didn't exist, so it was a king and enter a woman's name. It was king woman. It was super strange. Thank you, Conrad. Taking all that heavy stuff in, Polish people have told me there's always kind of like this sense of somber, stoic, suspicious, cynical, yet productive and prudent mentality that encapsulates the Polish. It's a weird paradox when you see them because it's like... Ugh, being Polish is the worst. Seriously. I know, right? I hate Polish sausages. They're so gross. They are, and the government is just totally whack. Yeah, yeah. Poland is terrible. What did you f***ing <laughs> say? You can't say that. You're not from here. Yeah. Well, it's like Estonia, yeah. We always bitch about our own country. But if somebody else says it, 
nothing happens because we're very laid back and quiet. Nothing happens. That took a little longer than expected, so uh, here's Hannah with culture stuff. Good to be back. Polish people have gone through a lot. They were pretty much fought for and invaded over 40 times for about 400 years. Nonetheless, the Polish people held through those centuries and retained their sense of identity. For one, in Poland, it is actually just as popular, if not maybe even more, to celebrate one's name day as well as your birthday. Poland has- I just recently had my name day. I didn't even notice it. My girl sent me a photo that which was my name day. So I found out, but it's not a thing in Estonia. We all have name days, no one cares. But in Poland, it's a big deal. Quite a high level of tertiary educated individuals, with about 80% of the young adult population having enrolled in university. Also, what? side note, the 35% of Polish people- Okay, I'm gonna call it. Poland is gonna rule as, uh, Europe at one day. Look, if Germany goes down, Poland goes up. I think he, that's the next country. The Slavs are gonna take the power and it's Poland. Poland is leading them, not Russia, no. Russia is mm, Poland living abroad are referred to as Polonia. There's a contest where we figure out who is the strongest man in the world and Poland has won the most of those contests. Then we have Ooh. the Silesian and Kashubian minorities. Let's let Conrad explain this one because, you know, it's a little complex. The Silesians, who live for the most part today in Upper Silesia, are an ethnographic group with a distinctive dialect of Polish. Internationally though, it's considered not as a nation or people, though some within the region consider themselves as a nation, which the Kashubians are, and they are considered as a West Slavic people separate from the Polish people. They are loyal towards Poland, but they have their own uh, recognized uh, minority status, they have their own traditions, they have their own cuisine, and they have their own language. There are even bilingual signs, which uh, Paul will definitely put in now. Thank you, Conrad. They've also racked up quite a few Nobel Peace Prizes at 17. They are front runners of innovations and inventions like kerosene and the kerosene lamp, the oil well, the bulletproof vest, and the modern drug test. A lot of festivals can be found year round throughout the country and in different regions. Popular ones include All Saints Day, May Day, the La Cognac Festival in Krakow, and during Christmas, you might see the creepy Turon everywhere. To expound. Okay, that's from pagan times, I'm pretty sure. More on Polish music and arts here, you know, it's Keith or whatever. Yeah! Music in Poland <laughs> goes way back to its ancient Slavic roots. Instruments typically used include things like the wood horn, the hurdy gurdy, the horse hair drum, the pedal accordion, and the suka. What you call me? Suka. I don't think that's an instrument, that's a woman with bad, bad habits. Even though he had spent most of his time in France, Chopin was born in Poland. His homeland was always one of the central themes to his often somber and melancholy masterpieces cherished worldwide. During the Polish National Revival, this dude, this way, this dude, collected varieties of folk music for broadcast, including the most famous ones, these which are still performed to this day. It's crazy, in, 18, in the end of 1800s, European nations awoke nationally, Estonia and all others, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, and, and also the same way, at that time, Estonians also collected their national, not Estonians, Baltic Germans who spoke Estonia and started to love Estonia and like it, became Estophiles. Estophiles meaning someone who, like, is crazy about Estonia. There were Germans, they were crazy to est about Estonia because they lived here and they saw that our culture is truly amazing and vibrant. They started collecting it. And in Poland also, in that case, in the end of 1800s, in the time of the awakening, as we call it in Estonian, they started collecting the folklore. And they did it, a huge amount of folklore were collected. And thanks to that nowadays, these countries know what they are, where it does their Folk comes from, they have these old songs, and it's all thanks to that, that in the 18, end of 1800s, someone collected a huge amount of it. I know that uh, there's this guitar player named uh, Jakub Zichetsky, and he is amazing. Thank you, Keith. Whoa. And now the most complicated part, history. In the quickest way I can condense it, Slavic tribes and states in the Vistula Basin, Piast Dynasty, Greater Poland, Christianity and tribal unification, Pomerania is annexed, this dude becomes the first king, feudal disintegration, Mongols invade, Czechs invade, Teutonic Knights invade, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, Swedes invade, Prussians invade, end of the Commonwealth, constitution written, Napoleonic Wars, Kingdom of Poland and Free State of Krakow, Russian partitions and Russian Poland, World War I, Polish-Soviet War, independence from Russia, Germany invades, World War II begins, communism years, independence, 
science, weird West Germany stuff, some other interesting things like they got a Pope and a Nobel Peace Prize, first fully free elections, they joined NATO and the EU, and here we are today! <laughs> some people, you guys, the Polish geography people suggested we mention in this episode include all those dukes and kings, pretty much any hero that fought with the winged hussars, Copernicus, although he was- Oh yeah, the winged hussars, the feared cavalry of Europe, everybody was afraid of it, it almost never lost a battle, and it had huge wings. Wouldn't probably work nowadays, but back then it was the killer move on the battlefield to bring out your winged hussars and whip everybody's German, Marie Curie was actually Polish, Mikołaj Rai, Pope John Paul II, all these athletes, these directors, all these artists and musicians, the dude from the movie The Pianist was a real guy, these American revolutionaries, and speaking of Americans, John Krasinski, Kristen Bell, Steve Carell, and Roman Polanski are also part Polish, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, and finally, of course, Dragos Brzezicic. <laughs> and there's a lot more I could have mentioned, but that would take way too long. There's a lot of famous Poles all over the world. They've left their global mark and speaking of global hey i've watched a lot of polish videos on youtube actually uh, i don't know i don't remember the names of it i i've done reactions of like 15 full polish videos with the subtitles just find them in my channel search poland or something you will find all of them they're full out polish fully polish so just go and go crazy global marks that brings us to as a central player in Europe for a long, complicated history, it's no surprise Poland has picked up quite an entourage over many, many years of Polish existence. For one, as part of the Visegrad group, the Czechs and Slovaks are generally considered the close West Slavic brothers. They've had very few wars and conflicts with them. They understand their languages, kind of. Your brothers and friends are those who have you had the fewest conflicts and wars. However, they both kind of think the other sounds funny when they talk. For Russians, it's more of like a people versus government thing. As people, Poles and Russians get along quite well on a human level. It's just the governments that often disagree and clash. Poland for a while yeah. was under the Iron Curtain and Warsaw Pact, which complicated things even more. But as crazy as things get, there is always kind of like this universal Slavic understanding, which is why Ukraine comes in as a pretty close friend. Ukrainians love to come to Poland for work. There is also a fast growing Ukrainian community and they kind of share a similar post-communist struggle alliance although they still kind of don't like how Ukrainians honor the UPA, which is a whole other story. Poland is kind of like Germany's biggest regret that they have to constantly be reminded of literally every day as they are neighbors, but they are the largest economic partner for them as well. Germany does have many bilateral relations with Poland. It's the 21st century, people have grown up and moved on, and the future looks bright mostly between the two. Quick note, Lithuania is like the divorced wife that they remember having some of the best years of their history with. Today when a Pole meets a Lithuanian, they just kind of nod and smile, understanding everything the other is thinking without a <laughs> Their best friend, however, every poll has told me the same thing, Hungary. Historically, they've shared what? some of the same monarchs, heroes, they've always helped each other in times of need. There are many parks and monuments commemorating the friendship between the two. There's what even the a saying in Polish, two brothers. Hungarians, you're supposed to be finno Agric. what's up with the Slavic stuff here? Both to the saber and the bottle. In conclusion, let's give this to Conrad. Conrad, what do you have to say? Poland is a country that has a lot to offer both geographically and has been through pretty much everything historically. It's been an empire, it's been completely erased from the map. And today Poland is a growing and thriving country. I'm sure that the role of Poland on the European scene will only grow. Thank you, Conrad, and thank you, Art, for being in this episode. I really like this episode. Very much fun. Again, if you want, if you're Polish, you want to see videos in your own language, check out my channel. Just search Poland, and you'll find a lot of stuff, like tons of videos. Whoa, that was a long episode. Thirty-five minutes. Oh, my back is stiff. All right, my friends, this is a really a lot of work. These are long episodes. Do do them three times a week. So, if you wanna want this to continue, please support the channel. Best way is Patreon. Just go to the Patreon, make an account, make the smallest amount you can give. It's it's all right. Every amount helps. It's like one euro if you want to. Just become a patron, and that would help me out a lot. So yeah, please do it. And as always, my friends, until my next video, stay cool and bye bye.